I am Rainer Schulte, the director of the Center for Translation Studies at the University of Texas at Dallas, and also the editor of Translation Review, which was started in 1978. I am very familiar with the poetic tradition and the poets who have shaped the 20th century and especially the poets from Germany. Rainer Maria Rilke and Paul Celan, just to mention two of the best known. But today I want to introduce someone who is not that well known, but is gaining in reputation and in fame right now. Her name is Ingeborg Bachmann. She comes from Austria, was born in Klagenfurt in Austria, and when she was 12 years old, she saw the German Nazis walking through her town, which has been an image and a backbone of her further development and poetry throughout her career. She is one of the most innovative poets that we have in the tradition of poetic thinking in the, 19th, in the 20th century in Germany. And I would like to walk through some of her particular characteristics that has shaped her poetry, but has also shaped poetry thereafter on the national and the international scene. Ingeborg Bachmann is something of a different poet. She early on became clearly involved in the catastrophe that was happening in Germany and in Europe in 1945. It is very difficult to imagine what the world, the cities and the sceneries looked like at that point. One can say that most of the houses were in rubble, that one can say that there hardly any streets were passable, and furthermore, that everything around the, the people was a state of total destruction. It has come to mean that in 1945, when there was absolutely nothing there, there is one poet by the name of Günther Eich who wrote a poem called Inventory. And if you ever have a chance to look at that poem, I would encourage everybody to get a feeling for the atmosphere that was present in 1945. The poem consists, since there is nothing that you can rely on, the only thing you can rely on is your cap, your hat, your pencil, a plate, and maybe a little storage bag. But that's all you have, because there is nothing else that you can rely on. In my case, for example, it was also 1945, and I'm old enough to remember that, that the American occupation came into Germany and occupied our house, and we had to get out of the house within 20 minutes. Ingeborg Bachmer is of the same generation and has experienced the total destruction that was then prominent, a lot of People were committing suicides. A lot of people were wandering in the streets. Some of them had lost their mind. And I remember one of them sitting in the middle of the street and having an ax and just pounding a piece of wood. That is the atmosphere that Ingeborg Bachmann came into. And it became the backbone of her poetic thinking and her poetry. Now, the next thing is obviously, what can you do when there is nothing there, there? There's uh, a German musician and scholar by the name of Adorno, Theodor Adorno. He said that after Auschwitz, it was no longer possible to write poetry. The reality is different. In 1945, all of a sudden, a group of established writers, poets, came together and they founded the Group 47. People like uh, 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 Günter Grass and others of the same caliber, uh, Paul Celan, 
and Ungaretti and a few others, they all of a sudden came into existence and founded the group 47. It is interesting that Ingeborg Bachmann also became part of that group 47, like Ilse Eichinger, also another female poet writer. And it is interesting to note that in 1953 she was also awarded the Group 47 Prize for her collection of poems called Die Gestundete Zeit. What does it mean? The translators have had a tremendous difficulty how to translate this. It's mortgaged time, it's reduced time, it's all kinds of connections were put with the Gestundete Zeit and there is not one single translation. However, it is extremely important to understand the undertone of that collection and the poem that is also called Die Gestundete Zeit. That means that the only reality that we have left is time, but time and space, I should say. But the problem is that we as human beings have no longer a real place in the space and therefore time, even though it's the only thing, can only end up in some kind of darkness. And the beginning of that poem, Die Gestundete Zeit, the mortgaged time, the mortgaged time, means that we can only hope to live in the moment of the time and not hoping for some kind of solution because at the end and the beginning of the poem it says uh, darker times will be coming andere Zeiten stärkere darke Zeiten werden kommen yeah. so what we have at the beginning and the end even though then she walks through the time how it could be used in space it actually never happens so what we have to take then, what is it that the poet has when there is nothing, nothing, nothing? What does the poet have? It's the word. So his, her poetry is a poetry of words. She hopes to renovate the thinking and perhaps creating a certain comfort within the disaster of where she grew up through the combination of words that will live in themselves and the sound of these words might ultimately carry us through time, through space and hoping that there might be a solution at the end. But the last line of the poem, the Gestundete Zeit, tells us very clearly that's an illusion because darker times will be coming in the future. Thank you.